Alright, good evening. Let's uh, welcome back yeah, to the sixth part of uh, this chapter, chapter 3. And as we were looking at yeah, this, the, the difference between the cash flow statement and the statement of cash flows is due to the different placements yeah, of three items in these two statements. The other statement are the, the other items in these two statements are uh, placed in the same uh, manner yeah, except for these three items. Uh, because of this uh, different placement of these three items, the two uh, statements provide uh, uh, apparently different view. Yeah? On the surface, they provide different sums or different figures Okay, because of these three uh, items, yeah, these three items placement in different places, yeah. So the first item is interest, as you can see here, interest. It is placed uh, in the income statement in operating activity, but then it's not placed in the cash flow statement, yeah. It is placed uh, in the cash flow statement. It is placed in the financing activity. So that's the first difference, yeah. Now, the second difference is because of the cash change, okay, change in cash balance, okay, which is not stated yeah, uh, in the statement of cash flows uh, within yeah, the three activities, either operating, uh, investment or financing, but it appears in the cash flow statement, okay, in working capital changes, yeah, change in working capital. So, the cash change is accounted for in the uh, NWCC, yeah, net working capital change here, right? So it is accounted for here. But for the statement of cash flows, this change, yeah, this change in uh, cash balance is accounted for uh, here, yeah, at the bottom, okay, separately, yeah, because all the changes in uh, the operating activity, the cash flow from operating activity, the cash flow from investment activity, and the cash flow from financing activity, these three, yeah. Uh, together will account for the change in cash balance. Yeah, so this is a separate item. If you like, it's the fourth uh, item. Yeah, in the statement of cash flows. So that's the second difference. Yeah, uh, between the two statements, and the third difference is notes change. Yeah, or change in notes payable. All right, in the cash flow statement, this appears uh, again uh, within working capital changes. Yeah. But then it does not appear uh, there for statement of cash flows. But for statement of cash flows, it appears later here, yeah, in financing activity, yeah, in financing activity, notes uh, change in notes payable will appear here. That is why the the sum, yeah, uh, the difference in the sum between these two statements, yeah, uh, is obvious. Okay, the cash flow statement gives you. A slightly different picture and the statement of cash flows give you a different picture yeah? okay but uh, generally okay these two statements should provide the same view of the position of the company yeah, in terms of cash flows okay the cash flow statements gives you a different perspective while uh, the statement of cash flows give you uh, gives you a slightly different perspective about the same reality yeah about the uh, performance and position of the uh, business, yeah, the same company. All right, now let's go back to uh, the slides. All right, this is where we stop. Okay, uh, let me just push it to the center, roughly. Right, yeah, this is where we stop just now. Okay, so this sta uh, sam the statement of cash flows, yeah, uh, has been. Uh, derived. Okay, I've shown you this earlier. We have uh, we have uh, we have determined this. Yeah, we have done this yeah? using Excel, but we get the same yeah uh, result. So now we want to summarize this. Okay, we want to summarize this. Okay, we can summarize this by looking at yeah in the uh, statement of cash flows there are three major activities. Okay, so here you have. Uh, let me just get the pointer. The pointer doesn't come out there. Yeah? Right, it doesn't matter. Okay, you have the cash flow from operations, that's the first activity, then cash flow from investment, CFI, then cash flow from financing. Yeah, this is CFF. So you have a cash inflow from operations, yeah, which is eight hundred and seventy-nine million dollars. 
Then in terms of uh, investment, you have a cash outflow, yeah? Therefore, it goes up, yeah? Here, if it's up, then it's outflow. Down is inflow, yeah? just for illustration purposes, yeah? All right. So therefore, uh, this 196 is a cash outflow from investment. Then from financing, you have another cash outflow of 633, yeah? From uh, financing. Therefore, in total, okay, the cash change must be an outflow of 50, yeah, because the total cash outflow and the total cash inflow must be equal, yeah. Therefore, cash outflow of $50 here actually means $50 cash is used to increase the cash asset balance, yeah, cash asset, yeah. So, the cash balance increases by $50 for the year, yeah. So, it is an outflow, but the cash change, okay, actually means an increase in the cash balance, okay, so be careful about that, yeah, it's an outflow, okay, because you use cash to increase the cash balance as an asset, and cash as an asset, okay, therefore, you can uh, summarize this, yeah, so cash outflow means cash is used to increase the cash asset, so the cash balance increases for the year yeah but if the cash happens to be an inflow yeah, cash inflow here means cash is sourced from the decrease in the cash asset so the cash balance decreases for the year yeah so you need to uh, note the difference between the two yeah so that is uh, the end of the first part yeah uh, or the first key concept in this chapter yeah then we move on to the second key concept. Remember, there are five key concepts in this chapter, chapter 3. Okay, so we move on to the second. Yeah? The first one is about uh, cash flows and determining yeah? or deriving the uh, cash flow statement. We have done that uh, in the first key concept, the first part of the chapter. Now we move on to uh, standardized financial statements. Yeah? how to standardize the financial statements. That's the second uh, key concept. Okay, yeah, so there are uh, a few methods here. We have common size. Yeah? The first method is called common size, common sizing, yeah? the financial statement. A moment. Uh, let me just get try and get the pointer here, yeah, if I can. Can't uh, get seem to get the pointer. Yeah, something is wrong with the. Let me see. No, I can't get the pointer. Anyway, uh, so you have uh, one moment. Let me just. All right. Yeah, welcome back. I have managed to get the pointer. All right. There are a few ways of standardizing the financial statement. Okay. The first. Uh, there are three methods actually. The first one is uh, called common sizing. Yeah, the financial statement. So you can common size the balance sheet or you can common size the income statement. Yeah? So that's uh, one way of uh, standardizing the financial statement. The other way is called the common base year. Yeah? Uh, the financial statements can be restated uh, as a common, yeah? based on a common base year and we'll see how this is done. So that's the second method. And the third method is to have a common, uh, common size and common base year. You combine two. Yeah? methods of standardizing okay why do you want to standardize we'll show how this can be done in an example later but why do you want to standardize here yeah? so this is explained in this third point here it is easier yeah, to compare financial information particularly when the firm is growing or when you want to compare uh, between different companies here yeah, in different industries okay uh, or within the same industry it's easier to compare but uh, if you want to compare uh, companies with different sizes yeah different sizes then it is better to standardize yeah you cannot compare using absolute figures okay you cannot compare financial statements again financial statements uh, if these are not standardized yeah all right and we'll see this will become clear when you look at an example yeah uh, and we will look at an example later uh, in the next slide yeah right so we have uh, the financial statements here is the same financial statement that we have seen earlier. Yeah, uh, this has been made slightly smaller. Let's increase the size so that you can uh, 
I think if you increase the size, you don't see the full extent of the statement, yeah? So here we have the balance sheet, okay, the first part, yeah? here we have the balance sheet for the year 2018. Then you have the balance sheet items for 2017. And at the bottom here, you have the income statement, yeah? Uh, all the items are clear, visible here. All right, now how do you uh, standardize? Yeah? There are three ways of standardizing. Let's look at the first method. Yeah? Let's unhide this. Okay, yeah? okay, so this is not very clear. So let me just uh, expand yeah? so that you can view. All right. Okay, this is the first method called common sizing, yeah? uh, the balance sheet as well as the income statement. Yeah? How do you uh, take the uh, common size, yeah? common size of uh, each item in the balance sheet? Okay? So you take the value of the item in the balance sheet, okay? then divide this by the total assets yeah? of that balance sheet in that particular year. Yeah? So, for example, here, 108 divided by 5606, you get 1.93%. Yeah? It's rather small, okay? but that's the formula here. Can you see it on the screen? B3 divided by B9. Yeah? So, you get this value, yeah? 1.93%. So, basically, the common size, yeah? the, the, uh, it measures... Uh, the item, yeah, uh, items proportion of total assets. For example, here 1.93 is the cash proportion, yeah, of total assets. So cash accounts for almost, yeah, very close to two percent of total assets. Okay, so that's what the common size uh, balance sheet, yeah, will tell you the items in the balance sheet. So if you look at receivables here it is almost 21 percent of total assets yeah so how do you get this 20.62 percent you take the receivables value for 2018 divide this by the total asset value for that year yeah so therefore you get 20.62 uh, percent okay so this is highlighted here because this is rather large yeah 20 percent is one fifth of total assets so one fifth of total assets are in the form of receivables now is that good? Okay, so this is something that uh, an analyst here yeah, or the manager needs to consider. Yeah, usually when the item, yeah, like current asset items, uh, one of the components in the current asset items, if it uh, constitutes a very large amount of the total assets, that means a large proportion of assets are tied up yeah, as that particular item, yeah, like inventory. In this case, uh, receivables. Yeah, so. That means the company has a lot of uh, funds yeah, or cash tied up as receivables. That means uh, the customers owing the company. So this may not be a very good indicator. Yeah? Usually it should be just like any other assets. For example, it may be slightly higher than inventory, but not so many times more. Yeah? Almost two, three times more yeah, than the inventory. Therefore, this is an indicator that this could be a problem. Yeah? It's not necessarily a problem, but it is something that you should investigate further. Okay, so that's what it indicates. Yeah? Likewise, you can do for all the other items. Okay, note that yeah? all these items will be less than 100% because 100% will be the total assets. Likewise, because total liabilities and equity is also yeah, equal to total assets. Okay, so these two must be the same. Therefore, in proportion terms, this must also be 100%. Yeah? So all these items on the liability and equity portion side must also be less than 100%. Yeah? So this indicates the, uh, the uh, relative size of that item yeah, compared to the other items in the balance sheet. So if it is very large, it indicates that a lot of funds are tied up as that item. Yeah? So, for example, here, equity is uh, almost 50%, and other current liabilities, and this is also quite large, which is 30, almost 30%, yeah? So, payables uh, account for a very small proportion. Uh, notes also account for a very small proportion, yeah? And long-term debt is smaller than uh, other current liabilities, yeah? Therefore, 
this is uh, the nature of this company's financing.